Welcome back. My next guest tonight is a writer and actress you've seen in It's Complicated and Olive Kitteridge. She now stars in The Big Sick. I think I'm gonna go home. Wait, wait. We haven't even had sex again yet. Yeah, I'm just not that kind of girl. I only have sex once on the first date. Wow. I <laughs> Well, I haven't had that. You so. don't get that because you made fun of me. What is happening? What are you doing? I'm changing under this blanket. I've seen everything. Do you remember we were just having sex? Yeah, but you were like <laughs> in the throes of passion then. And... Listen, I had a really nice time. Thank you very much. I'm just gonna like call an Uber, go home, and I hope. <laughs> just. <laughs> Your travel will be ready as soon as he puts on his pants. Please welcome Zoe Kazan. Hello. Thank you for being here. Good hey. Nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. So you are what we in the industry call a triple threat. You're uh, an actress, you're a writer, you've actually just written a play that's opening in the fall called After the Blast. You wrote and acted in Ruby Sparks, was an indie hit. Um, Olive Kitteridge, It's Complicated. And you're also from a film dynasty. Your mom and dad were, were they Oscar nominated screenwriters? They're both screenwriters and directors. Wow, and your grandfather was the great Ilya Kazan. On the waterfront, streetcar named Desire, facing the crowd. Yeah, he actually like had a. Yeah. He had a contract. You had to put the great before his name, always, <laughs> like a I would, czar. I would feel bad if I didn't feel bad. Um, how did you get into writing? Was it just sort of like oh, the family just expects you will be writing? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was like a weird little kid who would like tell stories with my stickers. So I think it was kind of like. In the, you know, like a storyboard, like the bunny is going to go over and eat the mushrooms. <laughs> um, That's not a weird story unless it's a different kind of mushroom. Right, right. right. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like they really expected me to be a writer and were pretty disappointed and scared when I said I wanted to be an actor. Oh, re oh that's right, because, oh, yeah, director, writer. So actors for, you know, for writers and directors, they yeah. just paint on your brush, right? Right, they're just, they're just marionettes. Right, they're food animals. Right. So, <laughs> uh, how did you break it to them? Um, I auditioned for the school play and uh, got, like, a lead part and came home and was like, I'm an actor. And then, um, How old were you? 14. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What was the play? Um, it was The Dining Room by A.R. Gurney, who mm -hmm. just passed, like, a week ago. Um, it changed my life, and it changed my parents' life for the worse. <laughs> Do they worry about you? Because they know what show business is like. Yeah, they're terrified. They're so scared. They're watching this. They're taping it because they don't stay up late. And um, I'm sure they're like, oh, Are she's bombing. Are they literally bombing. taping it, or can you just buy them a DVR <laughs> so they can... You're right. You're right. Um, now, congratulations on, on the new film. We had uh, Kumail Nanjiani on here last week. And it's a brilliant comedy. It's the hit of the summer right now. You know, it's, it's what Transformers uh, would be if it were an indie about two people who meet cute. Yeah. And one of them gets terribly sick and gets into a medically induced coma. Yeah, I think we actually have more robots than in the actual Transformers. Mm -hmm. Now, Kumail, now Johnny's, uh, he wrote uh, the movie with his wife, who is Emily Gordon. Yeah. And is it hard to play the person uh, you're depicting in front of them when you're making out and having sex with her husband? <laughs> right, so just to clarify, it's, a tr it's based on a true story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, so, so um, they're making me do all these things, so it's a little bit her fault <laughs> that I'm making out with her husband. I'm saying you just walked on the <laughs> set and started making out with yeah, Kamal. Yeah, just no, like tapped his shoulder at the <laughs> catering. Yeah, perfect. Um, no, uh, it, it sounds it sounds a lot weirder than it was. Probably the weirdest part about it is that it felt really normal. But like being an actor is a little bit like um, doing Stockholm syndrome to yourself all the time. Like you're like you're in love with this stranger and you're a spy and you're like sure I'm a spy I'm in love with this stranger. So it, it, you know it's within the realm yeah. of my actual life. To be clear, she's not a spy in this she's movie. She's not a spy. She's a, a real normal movie. person. <laughs> yeah. But she was um, uh, there. When yeah. you were like, how did he feel about that? Because I had him on the show first time on. He said he'd never even touched a woman's hand till he was 18. 
Yeah, I would say like Camille's a real gentleman. Yes, he is. Um, and he asked uh, Emily, his wife, to leave set when we made out because he didn't want her watching. And Emily and I are kind of like, I think a little like more like, you know, anything goes. And so uh, a little more sex, <laughs> a little more sex positive. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dan Savage. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it felt, it, you know, <laughs> she came into our dressing room and was like, Camille asked me to leave. And I was like, <laughs> and then she left. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, you, your character, Emily, is in this because it's true. She, she, she became sick and she was put into a medically induced coma. Yeah. And so, what's that like to act in a coma? <laughs> Did you have to do a ride along first? Like, what is it? How do you, as an actor, how do you approach coma? <laughs> Um, well, it's as if you've never, like, breathed normally in your life before, like, because your only job is to lie there and be still and breathe normally, and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't know how to breathe. <laughs> like, oh, you become like, self-aware. Right, you become really self-aware. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really boring. I fell asleep many times and then would, like, wake up in the middle of takes and ruin the take by waking up suddenly. <laughs> Uh, and I, the main thing is that I was attached to all these, like, tr real medical devices that were actually taking, like, my heart rate and stuff, like, so they could have monitors on set with images on them. So when I'm watching the movie and I see the heart rate, that's your heart that's rate? That's my heart rate. I think they may have changed it because my heart rate is so good. Um, and she's supposed to be really sick. But, uh, no, I was, like, really strapped to all these things. And they were like, you can't get up because it takes, like, 15 minutes to unstrap you. Yeah. So the crew would leave to, like, go set up for the next take. And I would just be stuck there for, like, 45 minutes on my own. So I would hide books under my back so that I could read in my hospital bed between coma takes. <laughs> It's more interesting than an actual coma, probably. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. I don't know. I hope you never find out. Thank How you. about that? Thank you. It was lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for being you. here. The Big Sick is in theaters now. Zoe Kazan, everybody.